Does your Scratch game look like this? Well, in this video, we'll be adding some metaphoric sunshine, water, and fertilizer to transform your game into something amazing. Wow. Here is a boring clicker game. We won't change any of the gameplay, but we'll make it look better with these simple scripts. Let's give our metaphoric plant some sunshine with this amazing shine effect. So we go create new sprite, paint, draw a rectangle. And now we get rid of one of the points, just select it and delete. Then drag this so it looks kind of like the middle. Then we get rid of the outline, no outline. We make the fill white. Then we copy, control C, control V. Then use this rotate thing, but hold shift, and then it will move in nice steps. It doesn't really matter how accurate you are, you can always change it later. And then copy your four things into eight, and then select all, drag it in the middle, or it should snap. Now we get a when green flag clicked, set ghost effect to something like 50, this will make it transparent, go to back layer, then we get a forever loop, turn, one degree. Now let's test it. Oh, you can't see it because the background's white. Let's change it. Select choose a backdrop and then just get a blue sky or something you want. And also we need to move this shine effect to zero, zero. Now let's try it. Look at that. It's already improved. This next thing that I'm about to show you is as important as watering your plant. It is an amazing button effect that will make your game so much better. So in this sprite, we've got this basic script. It does work. Like, look, our number's going up. But it looks really boring. So to fix it, we get rid of this when sprite clicked. Then we replace it with a when green flag clicked, a forever, an if else, an if, a wait until, and then another if. Now, yeah, there's a lot. We'll start putting stuff in it and it'll make sense. So we do a if touching mouse pointer. So we need to actually touch the button. Then if mouse down, we need to touch the button and be pressing down. Wait until mouse down, but then we want to make it not mouse down. So we wait until we click and then we release the mouse button. And then we do another if when touching mouse pointer because you might move your mouse away from the thing before you finish clicking and we don't want to count misclicks so we get rid of them now here we can just set size to 110 to make it bigger then size to 100 now if we click play it does get bigger but it's not a very good animation is it okay to make an animation this is what we do we get a plus block set size to then we get this little size thing, size plus, then we get a minus, a hundred minus size. Then we divide it by two. And then we duplicate this and chain, get rid of this set size. And then we make that 120 or in a bigger number. So this will make it bigger. Here's just a brief explanation. This smoothly changes the size so the it will get to 100 and then you can change this number to make it faster or slower and then in this if touching mouse pointer we can just change our clicks by one let's give it a test click the flag look at that it smoothly gets bigger and then it smoothly goes back it's so much better than our old button before i can show you this super cool trick that'll be like fertilizer for making your game look so much better i need to show you how to make these cool this cool particle effect i don't really have an analogy for it maybe like mulch or something Okay, so create a new sprite. The particles should be the same as the thing you're clicking, so just choose that. Now the particles will be clones, so you want to do a when I start as clone block, then we'll go to a random position. So this should be at the top of the screen, which is about Y180, and then random position across horizontally. So that's like minus 200 to positive 200. It doesn't really matter how precise you are. Then we'll get a random rotation. So from negative... 360 to positive 360 so we'll do a full circle then you want to show set size to whatever you want really maybe like 30 to 40 percent so we'll make it smaller but a random amount of smaller because you want your particles to all be different then we can set the color effect to but then we'll change the color to ghost then do another random block 
This can be 60 to 70. It doesn't really matter, but the bigger number, the more transparent it'll be. And now we'll get a repeat until less than. Then we'll drag a Y position. Y position is less than about 100, negative 180. So when it reaches the bottom of the screen, what we'll do is delete this clone. And then in here, we'll make it go down a bit. Change Y by negative 10. And now to make our particle spawn, we need to go to our clicker thing. And then we can just use a create clone of myself and change myself to cat. I'll rename it to particles. Yeah, and then we'll get that. Create clone of particles. So now we need to make sure we hide it over here and let's test it. Okay, I messed up. <laughs> Don't change X by minus 10, change Y by minus 10. Bit stupid. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> Look at that. Now, see, some of them are going in front of our cat. Some of them are getting stuck. And they also kind of look boring. So let's fix that now. So we want to turn some degrees, maybe like 2 degrees. Change this to minus maybe 170. You'll, you'll have to adjust this number based on how big your sprite is. And then we'll want to go to back layer. Let's test that now. Okay, we click it, they're spinning, and it's going down. In real life, things have gravity, so the longer they are falling for, the faster they are. So let's make a variable for this sprite only called like gravity or something. So in our, when I start as clone, we set gravity to one at the start, we change gravi gravity by one, and then we put a times in this, and then we'll ch change y by gravity times minus 1.5 or something like that. You can change numbers to make it fall faster. Oh, my voice. Then we'll click and we're getting nice falling cats. Isn't that really cool? Currently, our game has this ugly orange variable readout. Let's change it to something that looks heaps cooler. So this number counter is inspired by a tutorial on Jackson Academy. So the first thing is you do is create a sprite and then just choose numbers. See, we, all, we get all these numbers. Let's start with one. Then we choose another costume. Search for two. Try and find it. Then you search for three. But it's important that you rename them from glow one, glow two, to the number itself. So we get one, two, three. And then just keep doing, repeating this. Search for the number, choose it, change the name all the way to nine. Okay, then we add zero at the end, so search for zero, put zero in, then we don't choose any more numbers, we paint an empty costume and name it blank, just nothing there, okay? And the costume has nothing in it. So we've got one through to zero, then a blank costume, now let's add some code. So the way this county works is we use clones. When green flag, click, repeat 10 times, create clone of myself. So we'll create 10 clones, which means we can have 10 numbers shown. We also want to hide it because we only want to show the clones. When I start as clone, show forever. And then this is where we'll update what number is showing. Switch, not backdrop, switch costume. Okay, we've got an empty switch costume block. Now for this to actually work, we need to know which costume to switch it to. So we get a clone ID variable for this sprite only, has to be for this sprite only. We set it to one, we change it by one, and then we can use this in the switch costume block. So letter clone ID of clicks, which is the variable we wanna show it for. And then to space them out, this is a bit complicated. So Y, we can just do 100. Then for X, <laughs> we've got a long block. Okay, so what we do is we get a minus block, then we get another minus block in here. We put our clone ID variable in, then 0 0.5, so we minus a half. Then in this second minus thing, we get length of clicks divided, divide, <laughs> divided by two times 50. Now I'll put it in, I'll explain it in a second. But let's first test if it actually works. So it's centered, and it stays centered when we change the number. Now, this 50 is the spacing, so if you want to move, space it further away, make it bigger. If you want the numbers closer, make it smaller. 
but 50 looks nice. Um, if you didn't get clone ID minus a half, it would be slightly off-centered, so you need that. If you didn't divide the length by two, it would be to the... I don't know what side that is, I don't know my left or right. Now this works, but we want a nice effect when the numbers change. If... If... Costume name... Equals... This, this letter clone idea of click, so we just duplicate that, and then do a not. Then we will put this switch costume in here, and then we'll do a change size by how much you want to grow it by. To shrink it back, we set size to, then we can go to the click thing we did, we can just duplicate it by dragging it in, then we put the size there, and then that should be good. Let's test it. Look, the number's going up. That looks nice, doesn't it? Your garden won't grow overnight, but if you watch this video here, we can add a shot and make it even better. And also, can you please subscribe so I can get a little Lavelle microphone?